You've been trying so hard to get a band 7 in writing, so you can finally study or immigrate to the UK, Canada, Australia or New Zealand. But no matter how hard you try, you're stuck in band 6.5. However, don't despair. Harry's here from IELTS Dort, and I'm here to help you break through the 6.5 writing barrier. And now in part 4 of this 4-part series, I'm going to focus on General Task 1, which is a formal letter. As I've already mentioned, the basic requirements in part 1, I'll just get straight into it. The formal letter is usually written to someone you haven't met before and you do not know their first and last name. The formal letter should be written to businesses, such as shops, restaurants, hotels, customer service, airports, travel or agencies, or educational institutes, such as when making inquiries about a course, or workstations, such as applying for a new job or resigning from your job, or a local council, such as when making a complaint about the lack of garbage collectors in your neighbourhood, or to an editor or an author, such as when giving feedback about their article, newspaper, magazine or book. Now here's an example of a formal letter to a business or a company. Write a letter to a manager of the lost and found department of the railway regarding your luggage and accidentally left on the train. In your letter, give the details of your train trip, describe the luggage you left on the train, and say what actions you want them to take. And here's an example of a formal letter to an educational institute. You would like to take a part-time course at a university, but do not have the money to do it. Write a letter to an organization that supports students financially and ask for help. In your letter, describe your qualification and degree. Provide some details of the course and explain how this course will help you in the future. And here's an example of a formal letter in work situations. You are working at an international company. Write a letter to inform your manager about your resignation. In your letter, thank the company for the opportunity of working there. Tell the reason for your resignation and confirm the date you are leaving. And here's an example of a formal letter to a local council. You recently discovered plans to build a new airport in your area and are unhappy with it. Write a letter to the local authority. In your letter, say how you found out about the plans. Explain what problems your neighbourhood will face and suggest some possible solutions to those problems. And lastly, here is an example of a formal letter to an author which I'll use as an example for this video. Recently you saw an article in a newspaper journal about a city, town you know, and some of the information in the article was omitted. Write a letter to the editor regarding this. In your letter you should tell how you know about this city or town, what information was omitted, and what the author should do about this. Now, as I've explained in my previous video, writing letters are much easier than essay writing, so I'd strongly urge you to really try your best, and you can do this by implementing all the following 20 tips to boost your band. Tip number one. When writing a formal letter, you should address it simply as Dear Sir or Madam, followed by a comma, as you don't know the recipient's name. However, if you are resigning from your company, then address it as Dear Mr. or Miss and your manager's first and last name, followed by a comma. Just keep in mind though that if you're using American spelling throughout your letter, then you must insert a full stop after Mr. or Mrs. However, for British spelling, you don't need to insert a full stop after Mr. or Mrs. Tip number two. Unlike with the informal or semi-formal letter, there is no need to insert a friendly greeting, such as, I do hope this letter will find you in good health and spirits. Instead, just start writing the purpose of the letter, and here are some phrases you can begin it with. I am writing with regard to, I am writing to express my concern, disappointment, dissatisfaction with, I would appreciate it if you could. I am writing to apply for the position of, I am writing to hand in my resignation, I regret that I am unable to attend. I am pleased to accept. I am writing to inquire about. I am writing to inform you that. Or, I am writing to request. I have also added many more purpose of the letter phrases in the description box under my video. Tip number three. Use a variety of sentence structures such as a simple sentence, a compound sentence, a complex sentence and a complex compound sentence. The first sentence is a simple sentence, which is an independent clause that has a subject, verb and object, such as, 
I dined at your premises last Friday evening. An independent sentence is a complete sentence and it makes perfect sense by itself. The second type of sentence is a compound sentence, which has two independent clauses that has a coordinating conjunction between them. The coordinating conjunction can easily be remembered by the acronyms FANBOYS, which stands for FOR and NOR, BUT, OR YET, AND SO. For example, I dined at your premises last evening, but I was bitterly disappointed with the service that was provided. Now, the third type of sentence is a complex sentence, which has an independent clause and a dependent clause. A dependent clause is an incomplete sentence, which has a subordinating conjunction. The subordinating conjunction can be easily remembered by using the acronym I saw a wabab, which stands for if, since, as, when, although, while, after, before, until, and because. For example, when I dined at your premises last Friday evening, I was bitterly disappointed with the service that was provided. Here you'll have noticed that when is at the beginning of the clause. The comma goes after the dependent clause. However, you can also use the subordinating clause in the middle of the sentence, and then generally there's no comma needed. For example, I was bitterly disappointed with the service that was provided when I dined at your premises last Friday evening. Many students, however, make the mistake when writing a complex sentence. They use both a fanboy and a I saw a wabub. For example, they would write, When I dined at your premises last evening, but I was bitterly disappointed with the service that was provided. However, this is wrong. You should use one or the other, not both. And the fourth type of sentence structure that can help boost your mark is the complex compound sentence, which has at least two independent clauses and at least one dependent clause. I think it is easier to write the complex sentence first and then attach the compound clause at the end of it. For example, when I dined at your premises last Friday evening, I was bitterly disappointed with the service that was provided, so I would like to be reimbursed for the meal. Tip number four. It's always important to be respectful throughout the letter and you must include please and thank you when required, even if you're writing a complaint letter to the manager of a restaurant. Tip number five. Always be careful of your choice of words, particularly if you are writing a complaint letter. So don't use emotive words such as crazy, appalling, hopeless, incompetent, filthy, lazy or disgusting. Instead, you need to soften the criticism. So instead of writing a complaint letter to the manager of the restaurant like this, I am writing to inform you that I was thoroughly disgusted with the appalling service that I received when I dined at your premises. You should instead write it like this. I am writing to inform you of the dissatisfaction I felt with the service that I received when I dined at your premises. Here you can clearly see that in the second example sentence, you're basically conveying the same message, but you're not making any direct personal attacks and you're not using any emotive language. Tip number six. Also, when writing a complaint letter about the poor service that you received, for example, please never threaten the recipient with ultimatums such as, if you do not refund me with the price of the meal, I will take this matter further and write scathing reviews of your restaurant all over the internet. Or, if you do not refund me with the price of the meal, I will speak to my lawyer and bring a lawsuit against your restaurant. In both examples, you are escalating the conflict rather than trying to solve the issue. Thus, it would be wiser to write, I believe it would be mutually beneficial if I was offered a full refund on the price of the meal as it will encourage me to dine at your premises again and further. Therefore, it will be a win-win situation for us both. Tip number seven. Another useful tip is to also insert a positive when writing a complaint letter, and this should be just before the complaint. For example, I have read many rave reviews about your restaurant on the internet and you are renowned for offering impeccable customer service. Therefore, I believe it would be mutually beneficial if I was offered a full refund on the price of the meal, as it would encourage me to dine at your premises again in the future. Thus, it would be a win-win situation for us both. Tip number eight, don't use contractions throughout your letter. Instead of writing, I'm, isn't, you're, or I'll, please write, I am, is not, you are, or I will, for example. Tip number nine, don't use exclamation marks. Tip number ten, 
Use academic linking words such as nonetheless, in spite of this, moreover, admittedly, likewise, hence, or presumably. Tip number 10. Use academic vocabulary such as ascertain, crucial, omit, permit, indicate, comments, consider, acquire, obtain, or compensate. Tip number 12. Don't use general idioms such as, I was over the moon, I was a storm in a teacup, it's a piece of cake, don't beat around the bush, or it's raining cats and dogs. However, you can use academic idioms such as trial and error, the driving force behind, as a rule of thumb, last resort, in light of, bear in mind, a gold standard, the big picture, in droves, along the lines of, it goes without saying, state of the art, and bridge the gap. Tip number 13. Use more formal modal verbs. Instead of writing, the modal verb can, as in, I would appreciate it if you can please provide additional information. Instead, use the modal verb could, as in, I would appreciate it if you could please provide additional information. Tip number 14. Use academic collocations such as, Alien concept, safely assume, leading authority, vast array, accept responsibility, acutely aware, widespread belief, clearly visible, take no consideration, and potentially dangerous. I've also added many more academic collocations in the description box under my video. Tip number 15. Use formal phrasal words such as verge on, allude to, narrow down, frown upon, rule out, adhere to, engage in, pertain to, account for, resort to, and follow through. Tip number 16. You can also insert some phrasal nouns such as blackout, breakdown, crack down, outburst, outcome, turn over, work around, onlooker, intake, and throw away. I've added more formal phrasal nouns in the description box under my video. Tip number 17. In formal letters, you shouldn't ask direct questions such as, could you please tell me how much the course will cost and its duration? Instead, you should ask questions indirectly such as, I would be grateful if you could inform me of how much the course will cost and its duration. And here are some other phrases you can use to ask indirect questions. I would appreciate it if you could inform me. I would like to know. I was wondering if you could inform me. Would you mind informing me? If possible, could you please inform me? Would you be kind enough to? Or could you possibly inform me? Tip number 18. In the last paragraph, please link the first sentence to the original purpose of the letter. For example, if the purpose of the letter was to complain about the poor service that you received at the restaurant, you can write... I would really appreciate it if you can address the concerns that I have raised about the poor service that I received at your establishment. Tip number 19. After writing the first sentence in the last paragraph, please include a closing sentence. And here are some closing sentences you can use. I hope that this letter has made the situation clear, but please do not hesitate to contact me if you require any further details. I await your reply with interest. I look forward to our meeting at the end of the month. Thanks again for your attention, consideration and time. It is always a pleasure doing business with you. I'm looking forward to getting your input on this issue. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to my email address. I would appreciate your immediate attention to this matter. Please find attached a copy of my CV. I look forward to hearing from you in the near future. Or... I trust that these suggestions will prove to be of assistance. I would be happy to offer you any additional information you may require. I've also added many more closing sentences in the description box under my video. Tip number 20. After writing your fifth and final paragraph, include yours faithfully as the sign-off if you addressed it as Dear Sir Madam. However, if you addressed it as Dear Mr. John Smith, then end it with Yours Sincerely. Okay, now that I've shown you the 20 tips to help boost your score for the formal letter, let's put it all together based on this writing prompt. Recently, you saw an article in a newspaper or journal about a city, town, you know, and some of the information in the article was omitted. 
write a letter to the editor regarding this. In your letter, you should tell how you know about the city or town, what information was omitted, what the editor should do about this. In the following letter, I've also highlighted in black to show you how I've implemented the 20 mentioned tips to boost your score. Dear Sir or Madam, I am writing concerning the article that was featured in the England Morning Herald, which is rightfully considered as the gold standard in journalism. Since its inception, I have been an avid reader of this publication, but I was disappointed to read that there was an omission in it regarding Shakespeare's birthplace. I have been a resident of Stratford-upon-Avon since I was born, so I am familiar with every nook and cranny of this respondent place. Not only that, my late mother worked as a tour guide here, and consequently, she would often pass on interesting tidbits of information regarding Shakespeare's home over supper. Although the article was well researched, you omitted a vital piece of information, which I believe would have made your article even more comprehensive. You failed to mention that an American wanted to purchase the property in 1846 and proposed to have it shipped to the United States brick by brick. His proposal, however, was thwarted. Instead, a Shakespearean birthplace trust was established with the assistance of Charles Dickens and they raised the necessary £3,000 to purchase it. Once acquired, the restoration was able to proceed. I sincerely believe that it was a grave mistake to overlook this crucial part of history as it does not recognize the significant contributions that Charles Dickens made to ensure the preservation of English heritage and literature. Would you be kind enough to do a follow-up article on Charles Dickens in your subsequent feature on notable English authors and mention how he saved a national treasure, please? I would be grateful if my suggestions could be implemented, as I am sure that would be the only way that this oversight can be rectified. I would be happy to offer you any additional information you may require. Yours faithfully, Mr. Harry Wordsworth. Now that the letter is written, please don't forget my golden rules for all I else writing, which is to allocate a few minutes of proofreading, as this can make a world of difference between a band 6.5 and a 7. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to watch part 1 of my new series, where I'll be covering academic writing task 1 in more detail. If you like what I do, please like, subscribe and share my channel, and press the bell icon for notifications of new videos. Cheerio!